going on everybody it is your boy destroy coming at you with another video uh and we are back with mlb 2019 franchise scouting tips um so i make this every year uh for all the franchise players and to anybody new to franchise that really doesn't understand it I make this video just to try to help you out um and also i get tips from people too that help me out and then we can make a really good scouting tutorial because scouting is very hard especially in this game it made it a little bit harder than the previous games um so i'm gonna jump into it right now and start off with the scouting coaches this is the first thing that you need to do is sign the best scouts possible uh so we got a three million dollar east scout so we're gonna take out the east scout here we're gonna get a central scout we're gonna replace that one we have a west scout I'm gonna replace that one and we can do you know what we're gonna sign this east scout as well for international um sometimes it does matter of which region scout you have scouting players but I found previously that scouts are pretty hard to come by as far as uh, especially this $3 million scout. I've not found one yet in my other franchise. But it does vary throughout franchises and how many seasons deep you're in of what kind of scouts you get. So I always try to get the best scouts possible. Um, so now that we have the best scouts, we're going to go to scouting. So I always start off by looking at what we got. We have a lot of blue chip players, which means these players are already fully scouted. Sometimes players don't get drafted and they will come back the next year and they will be blue chips already from your previous scouting So as you can see we have a lot of 80 potential now in previous videos. I made I said that it was the overall you want to go for and I, I learned that no, it's potential if, if you want the best prospects possible you want to make sure they have an 80 potential no matter what their overall is you want to go for potential the other thing you want to look for is their age now in the first couple drafts most of the players are fairly young and as you start going on they're going to become some are going to stay in the draft and they're going to become older you don't really want to go for older uh older prospects unless you're in to that maybe you find a 25 year old that's got a 99 potential and he's got a 70 something overall that's perfect but most of the time you're not going to find that so i always try to stay for age so this is how we're going to start it off we're going to go to west we're going to do pitcher you can do with all the abilities right left i just always stay on right and clutch it it doesn't really matter of how they do that i mean you're there's only so many players that are going to be in the draft so you're not going to miss much if this is what you focus on so i always leave it so we already have one for that so we're going to go to international for that one and then pitcher so what i typically do when i do pitchers is i'm going to sim for about 10 days i used to do two weeks but now 10 days is the norm for me so as you can see we're going to go to starting pitchers and some of the players will pop up others won't because you've already been simming as you can see we have a lot of 80 potential pitchers which is awesome so if you want to focus on pitchers in one draft go pitchers until they say there's no more players left if you're like me and you're just starting out or you need everything because you're the baltimore orioles and they need everything uh then we're gonna go to catcher next catcher is a lot different than any other position because there are small amounts of catchers especially in the west the west always has the smallest amount of players so what i do is i'll do five days for catchers so we'll do that as you can see the west ran out of catchers so infield same thing like like i said if you guys want to go for the the skills you could do the skills i typically don't and see the catchers we got a few more 80s in there which is nice so now like i said we're gonna do do 10 days like i said this is only for if you want to scout as much as possible with all the positions possible without overdoing anything 
I said the West the West always has the smallest amount, so they'll end uh, earlier than the rest of the regions. Let's see if off the top they show any. There's one there. Like I said, most of the time they they show it's just day by day that they'll do the uh, red chip, which is a new found player. So we got outfield. Like I said, we're gonna do it for about ten days, nine or ten days, give or take. And Wes is done. Okay. Now this is where it's different from the last few years of franchise. What I always did was I did three days of simming. I do have one of the best scouts I found, so I'm going to see if maybe it's three days if you find a highly efficient scout, but we're going to try it out and find out together right now. So we're going to go potential. We're going to find each one's, so we'll go west. We're going to sign them, find an east player, I'm going to sign them. Have to do international for that scout and, and central. So we'll test it right now. Like I said, I've never had this high, uh, high of a scout. So we'll see. We'll go three days. So three days almost gets you exactly where you want to be. Typically, sometimes I've had it this close. I've done one more day and their potential has gone up. So you could either do three to four days. I do four days now, especially once you find the right overall players uh, or you're going for a specific area, you could do the four days. If you're just doing the general and you want to scout as much as possible, especially in the first year with the most amount of players, you'll do it uh, three days. So four if you really want just a certain position and then three days if you're going general unless you want specifics to every player. So we did that. We're going to go on. Uh... Now it doesn't matter which scout is scouting which region. It mostly just makes it easier for the scout to get the information better about that player. Now see, we did three days that time, and this is how much we got. So we're going to go one more day. You can see, so if you get a $3 million scout, they're going to be right here where it shows the efficiency. That's how well they're going to be. So it all depends on what kind of scouts you're looking forward to. Like I said, the highest paying, you get the most out of it overall. So it takes three days fully for a 92 efficient. I'm going to say a 90 probably does it too. So probably 90 and up does it in three days the rest are going to do it in about four and that's only that much all right everybody and we're back with the draft so the draft we just scouted everybody not everybody but we scouted as much as possible in the first year it's always harder uh the rest of the years it gets a little easier because there's not as much talent that's always how uh, video games usually are with drafts so we're gonna go into it because we're baltimore we get the first pick so now we get to look, we get players. So you want to go after the highest potential, highest overall you have. So 75, 70 sounds good on paper, especially a 19 year old. Like I said, we really want that 80 potential um, and then whatever overall. So we have one Syria. Typically what I look at for pitchers too, just because it's awesome is the hits per nine and the case per nine because that will help you out in the long run so we're gonna get kevin hill he's another 80 but he's got that high strikeouts and hits per nine just typically what you want to build your starting pitchers around so next we have a catcher with an 80 
or we can go center fielder at 50. So I think we're going to go with the center fielder. Next, we have a closing pitcher opportunity, so we're going to take him as well. So you can see we're pretty much running out of 80 potential that we scouted. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go after some of these guys with 80 potential high overall. You have the most chance of picking these guys and then actually having that than picking a lower potential um, and trying to get it up. So we got a closing pitcher and a center fielder. This guy has a 75 overall, 80 potential, potentially. So we're going to take a chance on him too. Got in closing pitcher. We're running out of the 80s possibly. So we're just going to take a starting pitcher. For me, the hardest position to get in franchise, and I'm sure if most of you have played franchise, you can say the same thing. This year, it seems like it changed a little, but it's always relieving pitchers. Those have the lowest potential. You will very rarely find a uh, A or B potential on closing pitchers with a high overall. If you find a B potential on a relieving pitcher, they're going to have like a 55, 60 overall, and it's hard to get their potential and overall to go up all right now that we're done with the draft we're going to go sign draft picks so right off the bat that first pitcher we took he's got a 70 overall and then an 85 potential so he's got a b potential at the age of 19 he can easily crack the starting lineup as you can see he's got a 56 strikeout per nine and a 65 hits per nine which is amazing Next, we got our center fielder. As you could see, he's got a 91 speed and a 96 steal. Easily have him lead off once he gets there. This one is going to take a longer time. As you can see, he's got an 89 potential, which is almost an A. It'll probably get uh, up to an A if you have him playing in the right uh, minor leagues. And he's doing good. The potential can go up, and his overall can go up very easy. Closing pitchers are always pretty easy to get in drafts. You can see 19-year-old, 89 potential, 70 overall. It's great. We're going to sign him. The starting pitcher, he's got a B potential. Anything 80 to 90 is B, 90 to 100 is A, just like in school. That's how they do the grading system, basically. 21-year-old, 66 overall, 82 potential, which means he could be a B left fielder he's got a high c he's got some really good contact and speed which is awesome that's what i usually go for nowadays is i go for contact just to have people get on base now this one is one that we failed at uh that is a 19 year old 69 potential so it's a d potential and a 56 overall so we're not going to take a chance on him this one's a different story he's got a 55 overall but a b potential so even if he doesn't work out we can always trade him because he has a b potential all right and that is it that is how you do drafting year one like i said it changes you'll be able to scout more players and be more efficient as the game goes on because you don't have so many players to scout uh, if anyone has any more tips for me that i can help uh, maybe make a new video this year and get some more tips out to other people if anyone has comments comment down uh, any videos you guys want me to make with MLB, especially franchise, I'm a big franchise player, just let me know and I will make those videos this year for you. I'm very interested in doing a Baltimore rebuild because it's the hardest team to do. They have such a terrible major league team. Their farm system is terrible and they play against Yankees in Boston every year. So it's very hard. So if you guys want me to do anything like that, just comment down below. Let me know and I hope you guys enjoyed.